everyone thinks. It's part of our very nature to do so. But left unchecked, our thinking can be biased, distorted, or even downright prejudiced. Children are not born with the skill to think critically, nor do they develop this ability naturally beyond survival level thinking. And parents and schools don't always help the situation either. We tend to teach our children what to think instead of how to think. This of course is the opposite of what should be occurring. In an environment where knowledge is rapidly changing, it's actually counterproductive to simply memorize new and isolated facts. As history has shown us, there is a strong likelihood that our understanding of facts may change in the future. Instead of encouraging our children to simply memorize facts, we must teach them how to process and evaluate information. Albert Einstein echoed this very idea in his book, Ideas and Opinions. On page 62 he wrote, I want to oppose the idea that the school has to teach directly that special knowledge and those accomplishments which one has to use later directly in life. And later he wrote, the development of general ability for independent thinking and judgment should always be placed foremost, not the acquisition of special knowledge. If a person masters the fundamentals of his subject and has learned to think and work independently, he will surely find his way and besides will better be able to adapt himself to progress and changes than the person whose training principally consists in the acquiring of detailed knowledge. Critical thinking is the process of examining and testing propositions to determine whether or not they correspond to reality. A critical thinker seeks the truth with objectivity, integrity, and fair-mindedness. This versatile tool can be applied to virtually every area of our lives, and it is our primary defense against delusion, deception, and superstition. Critical thinking can be thought of as the scientific method used by ordinary people. The scientific method is the most powerful method ever invented by humans to obtain relevant and reliable knowledge about nature. In fact, it is really the only method we have for discovering reliable knowledge. In other words, knowledge that has a high probability of being true. Critical thinking mimics the scientific method. First, a question is identified. Next, a hypothesis is formulated. Third, relevant data is sought and gathered. Fourth, the hypothesis is logically tested and evaluated. And finally, reliable conclusions are drawn from the results. Critical thinkers understand that, as knowledge changes, so might their conclusions. They must be willing to discard their ideas when compelling evidence demonstrates the contrary. Some see this as a weakness, but the critical thinker considers this a strength. Why hold on to an idea that isn't true just because at one time you thought it was? Critical thinking means correct thinking in the pursuit of relevant and reliable knowledge about the world. Critical thinkers ask appropriate questions, gather relevant information, efficiently and creatively sort through this information, reason logically from this information, and come to reliable and trustworthy conclusions about the world. In this short video, I laid out a very brief introduction to critical thinking. Now while looking at it you may say to yourself, this looks really easy. But this simply is not the case. You were not born with critical thinking skills and the development of those skills will be a lifelong endeavor for you. And while working toward gaining critical thinking skills, you'll no doubt fall victim to episodes of undisciplined or irrational thought.
we all have. But don't lose hope. The more you practice, the better you will become.